In this lab, we'll learn the uses and limits of four kinds of volumetric glassware. The graduated cylinder, the beaker, the pipette, and the burette. These pieces of glassware are important for measuring liquid volumes in the chemistry laboratory. As we'll see, there are glassware with different precisions and different uses. Graduations are shown etched into the glass, usually in white. Beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks, for example, are marked only with approximate volumes. In the image shown here, the beaker is labeled with the term approximate on the glass itself. Other glassware, such as the graduated cylinder, pipettes, and burettes, are marked with much more precise graduations. One of the most important decisions you'll make in the lab is when is it appropriate to only use approximate volumes and when is it necessary to measure more precise volumes. For example, a procedure will call for about 100 milliliters of water. In this case, there's only one significant figure and a relatively large volume, and the phrase about means only an approximate volume is required. A beaker or Erlenmeyer flask would suffice. On the other hand, if a procedure asks you to dissolve something in 100 milliliters of water, a 100 milliliter cylinder would work best. Glassware is also labeled with what it is intended to contain, TC, or deliver, TD. Here, this graduated cylinder is intended to contain 100 milliliters at 20 degrees Celsius. Handling glassware is also a safety concern. The most common injuries in the chemistry labs are simple cuts from glassware. It is always important to check your glassware before using it. Always check for cracks and chips in the glassware. If you see any, report it to your instructor and they will likely tell you to dispose of the glass in an appropriate container, like a broken glass box. Next, you should always clean and dry your glassware before use. This includes washing with soap and water and a simple brush, and drying with towels, usually paper towels. Some glassware are too small or narrow to reasonably dry with paper towels. In this case, you should allow them to air dry. Either way, you will always run your sample solutions through your glassware before use. For example, you would add some solution to a burette. You would tilt the burette at an angle and rotate it so that the inside of the walls are coated with the solution, then dispose of the solution in a waste container. In this section, let's practice using and reading the glassware correctly. I'll start with the graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinders come in various sizes. Our labs have 100, 50, 25, and 10 milliliter graduated cylinders, each with a specific graduation. You have to make an educated decision when choosing a graduated cylinder. The rule is to use the larger cylinder that is closest to the volume you want to measure. For example, you are asked to measure 5.0 milliliters of acetic acid for a titration experiment. You would choose the 10 milliliter cylinder. If you choose the 50 or 100 milliliter cylinder, you will find that there is significant error introduced into the data because there is less precision. On the other hand, in the same titration experiment, 
you are asked to dissolve sodium hydroxide pellets in 90 milliliters of water. Here, you would choose the larger 100 milliliter cylinder. A very interesting phenomenon is the meniscus that appears when a polar liquid like water is introduced into a narrow glass tube. The meniscus is the upward curvature of the liquid. This is most evident in narrower tubes like the 10 milliliter cylinder and burettes. The rule is you must always read the bottom of the meniscus at eye level. Let's practice reading the meniscus. Here is an example of the burette. Every major marker on the burette is a milliliter. Here you see 31 milliliters and 32 milliliters. And you see the graduations increasing going downward. This is because burettes are glassware meant to deliver. We are measuring the volume of liquid exiting the burette. Let's zoom in a little closer. Every milliliter is divided into tenths. So we can read 31.1 milliliters, 31.2 milliliters, 31.3 milliliters, 31.4 milliliters, 31.5 milliliters is difficult to see here because of the meniscus. But you can certainly see the bottom of the meniscus is touching 31.6 milliliters. Because we always estimate one uncertain value, I'll add a zero to the reading. Now, let's take a look at graduated cylinders. Here is a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. You'll notice that the graduations are going upwards. Recall, cylinders and beakers are meant to contain volumes. These 100 milliliter graduated cylinders read every one milliliter, so you see we have less resolution. With wider cylinders, the meniscus is flatter. Here, we are certain of 82 milliliters, and you can see the meniscus is slightly above the 82 milliliter graduation. I'll estimate a tenths value of five and report 82.5 milliliters, three significant figures. Here is a 25 milliliter cylinder. The major graduations are every milliliter, and you'll notice that we can even see a graduation between every milliliter, so we have the resolution to read every 0.5 milliliters. You can see the meniscus goes past 20.5 milliliters, but doesn't quite reach 21 milliliters. I can estimate a volume between 20.5 and 21 milliliters, which is 20.75 milliliters. Notice the hundredths place here. More resolution compared to the 100 milliliter cylinder. Finally, the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder is the smallest in our lab. Notice every major graduation is one milliliter and there are other graduations at every 0.2 milliliters. There are other cylinders that can even read every 0.1 milliliters too. The meniscus here is more evident. We can safely estimate a volume of 6.80 milliliters. Let's take a closer look at the experiment of comparing different glassware. 
we want to learn the uses and limits of four kinds of volumetric glassware, the graduated cylinder, beaker, pipette, and burette. And the way we'll do this experiment is to find the calculated volume based on the mass of the liquid and subtract the observed volume. In other words, how precise is our observed reading compared to measurable data, the mass of the liquid? And the question you should be asking is how can we compare a mass and a volume? This is how we do it. To find the calculated volume, we'll measure the mass of the liquid and then use the density to convert to the volume. Here's what the data section will look like for testing the graduated cylinder and the beaker. We'll measure the mass of the empty glassware first. Then add anywhere from 20 to 25 milliliters of water to the glassware and measure the mass. We can subtract the mass of the empty glassware to get the mass of the water by itself. Next, we'll measure the temperature of the water. This is necessary because we can use the standard table of densities to obtain the density of water at this specific temperature. As we saw earlier, we can use this density to find the calculated volume of water. And make sure you also record the observed volume. And it's important that you record the volume using the techniques used earlier in this video so you can record the correct significant figures. Finally, simply subtract the observed and calculated volumes to get the difference. This will give us an idea how precise these glassware are. Now let's take a look at the data collection.
A special note here, this is rare for the beaker. The beaker, along with Erlenmeyer flasks, measure approximate amounts. The fact that we measured so close to the calculated volume is a coincidence. Also, the difference to the proper significant figures is zero milliliters. We take the absolute value of the difference and report to zero decimal places because this is the least precise measurement, 25 milliliters. To zero decimal places, the difference in volumes is zero milliliters. For the pipette and burette part of this lab, we have to make a subtle change. You see, we can't place the pipette or burette on the balance to get their mass. Pipettes and burettes are delivery glassware and very narrow. We'll need to deliver an observed volume to a weighed beaker, then continue with finding the calculated volume. For the pipette portion of this experiment, we'll make this subtle change. The mass of water transferred indicates the mass of water transferred from the pipette. Also notice our lab asks for the ratio of the observed and calculated volumes. As you'll see, our pipettes deliver a specific amount. They only have one graduation. Now let's take a look at the data collection for the pipette. Here's how to use the pipette. First attach a pump to the top of the pipette. Twist the locking end of the pump to create a seal. Rotate the gear to create suction. This will add liquid to the pipette. Make sure to clean the pipette by adding solution to the pipette, then disposing the liquid into a waste container. You can press the release valve to release the liquid from the pipette. Some pipettes have multiple graduations. The pipettes we'll use only have one. In this example, the observed volume will be 25.00 milliliters. Now let's get back to the experiment.
Burets are similar to pipettes, but with one important difference. Burets deliver liquid to a beaker, and we read the volume delivered from the buret. Notice the initial and final liquid levels must be recorded. The volume transferred in milliliters will be our observed volume. The same procedure is used to find the calculated volume. And you can see the observed volume is the volume transferred from the burette. Now, let's look at the burette data collection. Attach a burette clamp onto a support stand. A support stand is a metal rod attached to a heavier metal base. Open the burette clamp and insert the burette into the clamp. Make sure the burette is placed in the rubber grooves as seen here. It is customary to place the support stand with the burette on the floor. Make sure the stopcock on the burette is closed. Then add your liquid from a beaker. As I mentioned earlier, tilt and rotate the burette so the solution touches the inside of the glass. This will clean the glass. Then, open the burette by rotating the stopcock. In some experiments, you'll need to adjust the flow rate by adjusting the stopcock. This will give you accurate readings. Now, let's go to the data collection for the burette.
Let's summarize the experiment. We saw less than a tenth of a milliliter difference in the calculated volume and our observed volume for the graduated cylinder. This tells us that the 25 milliliter graduated cylinder has good precision. Interestingly, we saw a zero milliliter difference in the calculated volume and our observed volume for the beaker. We know this is misleading due to fewer significant figures and the fact that beakers only measure approximate volumes. Beakers have fewer graduations and thus are less precise. It looks like we are lucky in this example. Notice the pipette and the burettes are very precise. A ratio close to one tells us that the calculated and observed volumes were nearly identical.